What's up, fellow Ironmen? Today, I have a complete and very detailed farming guide. I'll be breaking down every single patch, how to get the seeds for those, where to go on your farm runs, and how to set up your player on farms. Now, this video is pretty long, so as always, use these timestamps to skip around to skip what you don't need to know. That being said, enjoy the video. As always, we've got the essential items listed on screen. I personally have never used Ultra Compost, so I can't speak on how useful it is and if it's worth making or not. Now on this screen, I have just a few of the teleports that I use in every single farm run. Please don't wait to start doing your farm runs until you have all these teleports. There are lots of other teleports that I go over in this guide, and I'll be sure to mention them when I come across them. These are just the most important. And next up, we've got the quests, task sets, dailies, weeklies, and monthlies that are helpful for farming training. For quests, do all of them. I'm going to say this in every single guide. Do all of your quests. If you don't feel like doing all the quests, some of the important ones include My Arms Big Adventure, A Fairy Tale Part 3, River of Blood, and Plague's End. Now, completing task sets gives you plenty of lamps and plenty of items that have handy teleports on them. These include the Lumbridge Hard Tasks, the Mauritania Elite Tasks, the Ard... Ardy? Ardorn? Ard... Ard... Alphabet Hard Tasks? Wilderness Hard Tasks? They're Toronwin Medium Tasks. For your dailies, you've got the Crystal Tree Blossom, you've got Viswax for quick teleports and your daily challenges, and you got your Jacket Traits. I do have a guide on that, by the way. And your weeklies and monthlies are pretty straightforward. Tears of Guthix will go into farming if it's your lowest skill. And since the Penguin update, these are really easy to do, and they're really good in terms of experience. Do these every week. As for monthlies, Troll Invasion, I wouldn't recommend putting it in farming, but of course, it's your account. Do what you want with it. And make sure to check your oyster every month. Now to start training farming, you're going to want to unlock player and farms as soon as possible. To do this, you're going to need level 17 farming and level 20 construction. Level 20 construction is more straightforward. You can do the four god statues located around Gilinor. There's another one in Prith, but obviously you're not going to have that unlocked just yet. Doing these four god statues will get you from level 1 to level 11, and then you can build more stuff until level 20. Slightly more detailed construction guide is next. One of the easiest ways of getting to level 17 farming is to rake every patch you see add compost to it, and then add super compost to it. The best way of getting compost at this level is to just buy 40 pineapples every single day from Arhine in Catherby, and buy compost from farming shops. So you can rake a patch, you can add compost to it, and then you can add super compost to it. And if you want, you can plant something too, but you don't have to. Doing this too or three days will get you more than enough experience for level 17 and unlocking player on farms. Now there are other methods of getting to level 17 farming, but this is really, really simple. Rake, compost, super compost, and you're done. As soon as you can, start checking your player on farms. And at first, you're going to have one small pen and one breeding pen, and the only thing you can grow are rabbits. So from level 17, when you first unlock player on farms, until level 28, you're going to want to put rabbits in both pens. You can feed these woad leaves, and you can feed a lot of other animals' woad leaves too. You can buy these for 25 coins each from Weissen the Farmer in the Falador Park. As soon as you hit level 28 farming, you can buy a second small pen, and now you can put chickens in those. You don't want to put chickens in all three pens. You're going to want to keep one pen with rabbits and buy a farming totem. This will increase the breeding chance of all of your animals, and this is definitely worth it. You can feed these chickens pineapples, which you can buy from Arheim daily. And at level 54, swap your chickens out for chinchampas. Now to get chinchampas, you're going to have to hunt for them. Once you've got a breeding pair of these, you can feed them wood leaves, or anything else but Wood leaves is definitely the easiest. 
Moving on to medium pens. These unlock at 35 farming. From level 35 to 64, you can have one pen of sheeps. You can also feed these wood leaves. At level 64 farming, you unlock your second medium pen, and you also unlock spiders. You can get unchecked spider eggs from spiders all across Gilinor. Just double check the wiki to make sure the spider you're killing has a chance of dropping one. Spiders eat raw meat, and you can buy meat packs from Uglog and from Canifus. At level 81, you unlock Zagamites. These eat mushrooms. To collect these in bulk, head to the Mortmire Swamp with either an Avanda's Flail or a Blessed Silver Sickle. If you have the Deadliest Catch quest done and some sort of prayer renewal, whether that's the Elven Ritual Shard or Holy Overload or just regular prayer potions, head to this spot on the map. You're going to want to cast the blooms over and over and over and over again, and you'll collect Mortmire Fungus, which are mushrooms. Once you have the level for Tomb Shrooms, you really won't run out of these mushrooms anymore. And there's really no use for Tomb Shrooms besides feeding your Zygomites. Now onto the large pens. You unlock your first large pen at 49 farming and 60 construction. At this point, you can start raising cows from 49 to 71 farming. And you can feed these woad leaves. At level 71 farming, you unlock yaks as well as a second large pen. There's two ways of getting yaks. One. You can kill their parents over on the Fremenic Isles over and over again until they drop your breeding pair. Or you can get them from making pack yak pouches at 96 summoning. You can feed your yaks woad leaves. At level 92 farming, you can start breeding dragons. The best way of getting dragon eggs is to put five dragons in your personal slayer dungeon and keep killing them until you get them. Dragons eat raw meat and raw fish. So you can continue doing your shop runs, buying your raw meat packs from Uglog and Canifus. And you can also keep one worker on miscellanea towards fish, just make sure it's raw. Next, let's talk about the breeding pen. As soon as you finish the tutorial, you have access to it, and there's no further requirements. So if your construction level is too low to start building medium or large pens, then you can substitute this for one of the pens instead. But if you do have the construction level, Here's what level you should put each animal in. Alright, there's the main farm done. Now let's talk about the ranch at a time. Starting with the small pen, you unlock this at 42 farming and 45 construction. You can also build the breeding pen at this level too. Now from level 42 until 102, you can have frogs in your small pen. You only have one small pen on the ranch at a time, as well as one medium pen. From level 42 to 102, put frogs in your small pen. And also put them in the breeding pen from level 42 until 76. Frogs eat insects, and you can purchase these from the Yanil Hunter Shop. At level 102, you can start raising salamanders, and these eat woad leaves. You unlock your medium pen at level 76 farming and 80 construction and you can start raising Jadinkos. You should also put your Jadinkos in your breeding pen from level 76 to level 97. Jadinkos eat seeds. The best way of getting seeds are from the Taverly shop and the Drainer Market shop. These restock about every 20 minutes. At level 97, you can start raising Varanosaurs. You should also put these in your breeding pen from level 97 to 98. Everything from here on out on the ranch at a time eats raw meat, so keep buying your raw meat packs from Uglog and Canifus. You can build your two large pens at 98 farming and 90 construction. Now there are two large pens and one breeding pen. So from level 98 to level 100, put Arcane Apoterosaurus in all three pens. And then from level 100 to 108, keep it in one pen. At level 100, you unlock Brutish Dinosaurs. From level 100 to 104, put them in two pens. At level 104, you unlock Simitops. Basically, when you get Simitops, replace the Brutish Dinosaurs. From level 104 to 106, put them in two pens. And from level 106 to 110, put them in one pen. 
From this point forth, you're going to want to keep one Apoterosaur, one Stegosaurus thing, and one Rex in every pen. The two large pens and the breeding pen. Also from this point, the levels are really straightforward. When you unlock a higher tier Apoterosaur, replace the lower tier one. Same as the Rex, same as the four-legged thing. So that's your player on farms, and that's your ranch at a time. These are really, really good XP. Check them every day. Before we go on to training the rest of farming, outside the farms, let's talk about beans. This is my personal recommendation for what to spend your first couple of beans on. Once you have all of the unlocks on this screen, then you can spend your beans on trait rerollers and growth potions. On the left, I've got traits to go for, whether you're going for the breeding logs or for experience. And on the right are all of the growth potions. Now these will instantly grow one patch as long as you have the seed. You plant the seed, you throw the potion on it, and it instantly grows. You can check it for XP and whatever produce it has. Now before I show you a simple farm run that includes most of these patches, I have graphics on screen for each specific type of farming patch, including teleports to them on the map and what to grow for each level. First off, we've got allotment pouches. Now you can buy most of these seeds from the seed shops in Taverly and Draenor Village. Watermelon and snakegrass seeds, you can get lots of them from buyers. I personally don't grow anything in my allotment patches and just seed aside all of the seeds because I don't find it worth my time. But at a lower level, allotment runs are a lot of experience, so feel free to use your own judgment. Next, we've got flower patches, and these are found the same places that allotments are. There's really only two flowers that I would consider growing. The first are limpert seeds that you can get from vires, and the second are white lily seeds that you can get from it turning in giant mole drops to wisen the farmer. Next up, we've got herb patches. Now there are seven of these, and one of them is in the wilderness. So please make sure you bank everything except for the one seed that you need before you go to the wilderness. You don't want to lose everything you just grew from your farm run. Now herb seeds are complicated, and this video is going to be long enough. So if you're looking for a specific way of getting seeds or herbs, I recommend checking out my herb lore guide. If you don't want to watch that whole video, you can get a whole lot of herb seeds from Big Game Hunter, from Vyres, from Slayer, and from Bossing. Next, we've got hops patches. And outside of task sets, these are really only useful for grapevine seeds. But here are the locations. The first one is right between Lumbridge and Varrock, so either Lodestone is about the same distance away. And the third one is on Entrana, so if you really want to grow something there, make sure you bank all your weapons. Next up, we've got bush patches. Now don't replant these, because the, the farming XP you get from checking is really not worth it. You can get whiteberry seeds and poison ivy seeds from fungal mages. You can get avocado seeds from any lost grove creature. You can get mango seeds from elite clues or venomous dinos. You can get lychee or lychee seeds from big game hunter, tier 2, and tier 3 encounters. Now for cactus patches or cacti patches, don't replant these either. You can get potato cactus from hunting jadinkos. You can get dragon fruit from lost grove creatures or elite clues. And you can get golden dragon fruit from tetra compasses, from master clues, or from tier three big game hunter encounters. Now, the location on Anachronia, I marked on the map where the totem hotspot is. If you have the totem of the abyss, this is a viable option to check this third cactus patch. I personally have never done it. I'm just saying it's an option if you want it. Next, we've got mushroom patches. You can get bitter cat mushrooms from our friend the fungal mage. You can get morcello mushrooms from checking your zygomites. You can get 
stink shrooms from checking Jadinkos on your range at a time, or from tier 1 big game hunter encounters, and you can get tomb shrooms from brutish or feral dinosaurs. Next, we've got tree patches. You can get oak, willow, and maple seeds from bird's nests. You can get yew seeds from clue scrolls, tier 2 big game hunter, or PVM, and you can get magic seeds from tier 3 big game hunter encounters, the rare drop table, and bossing. And finally, fruit trees. You can get apple, banana, orange, and curry seeds from checking bird's nests. You can get pineapple and chiku seeds from tier 1 big game hunter. You can get papaya and gorana seeds from tier 2 big game hunter. And you can get palm and carambola seeds from tier 3 big game hunter. I recommend not replacing the chiku, gorana, or carambola seeds once they've grown into trees. And last but not least, we've got the special patches. At level 72, you can plant calquats. You can get these seeds from bird's nests. At level 86, 89, and 114, you can plant spirit trees, and you can get these from ganodermic beasts and bird's nests. At level 90, you can grow elder seeds. You can get these from crystal implings or crystal chests, but only in prif. At level 94, you can start growing the crystal acorn to do your crystal tree blossom daily. You can get these from elves, either pickpocketing or slayer, from crystal implings or the mother load maw. And at level 119, you can start growing money trees. You can get these seeds from any farming activity as long as you're at least level 99. One method that I have not gone over at all is the arc. The experience here is decent, and if you need chimes or want to go for the salty title, you'll definitely be doing a lot of farming here but I wouldn't go out of your way to go and train here. And now you've done it. You've reached 120 farming. Congratulations on never needing to buy pineapples or use super compost ever again because your cape will do it for you. And also, once per day, you can activate the cape to boost the happiness of all of your animals on your player-owned farm and your ranch at a time, which gives you more XP. From this point out, the methods don't change, it's just slightly easier. And the last part of this guide is just me showing a sample farm run. If you already know how to do this, then consider this the end of the guide. If not, feel free to follow along. I start my farm runs in Menaphos by running to the Cactus Patch. I'll activate my aura here, and I'll summon my Giant End Patch. Next, we head to Alcarid Lodestone so we can get the other cactus patch, and then we're going to take the gnome glider to right outside the tree gnome village. We're going to check and gather the produce from this fruit tree, use the produce on the leprechaun, and then we're going to follow Elkoi, go through the gate, and then use the spirit tree. Now, the next order does not matter too much. I personally go to Etcetria first for the bush patch. Then I head to Karamja to get that fruit tree. And then I'll head to the Tree Gnome Stronghold. I'll head to this fruit tree right here, use my produce on the leprechaun, and then I'll head to the regular tree over here. Next, I'll use my Attune Crystal Teleport Seed to go to Lelecha, or Lecha, sorry if that's wrong, to get this fruit tree. And then we'll head to the Myler District. There's a pretty cool surge right there that I just did. Highly recommend. Then I head to the Catherby Lovestone. I usually forget this fruit tree, so don't be like me.
and then I'll misclick, and then I'll teleport to Herbler Habitat. Then I'll teleport to Taverly. This is where I have my willow tree. I keep one willow tree at all times, just so I never run out of the willow branches for the giant end pouches. Then I'll head to Lumbridge to get that tree patch. I'll head to Varok for that tree patch. Then I head to Falador for that tree patch. And then I go to the Tra district for the final tree patch. Then I head to the Trollheim Stronghold teleport for the herb patch. I'll head to Mauritania using my Master Farmer's outfit, and then I'll head to Catherby using my Modified Botanist mask. Then I'll use the Cabbage Port teleport to go to the Falador patch. Then I'll head to Manor Farm for the final allotment patch. Then I'll use the Taco Zoe to get to a Fairy Ring. I'll go to Canifis for the first Mushroom patch. And I'll use my Tyranwin Quiver for the other Mushroom patch. Then I go to the Chris Cruis district for the herb patch and the bush patch. And then I head back to Varric to get that bush patch. Then I go to the Port Serum Lodestone and run west towards the Remington bush patch. And in this particular farm run, I did forget the Kandoran Monastery bush patch, but that would be the final patch, and then I finished my farm run. Now I'm sure this is not the most efficient farm run in the world, but it took me about 10 minutes to do, and I got nearly every patch that I meant to. And now we've reached the end of the farming guide. Hopefully this was helpful to you. If it was, please leave it a like. It really helps the channel grow. The next skill I'll be breaking down is construction. So until next time, thanks for watching, stay safe, and I'll see you next time.